We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Nothing, I'm a damn walk on. Hey, man, we got a special guest today. She don't really need an introduction, man. She down here in Atlanta with us, guys. You know already it's about to go down, man. Miss mm-hmm. Era, is it Era Nicole Williams? Era Nicole Williams. Williams, yes. dope. So, <laughs> and she's a life coach, guys. And, and what you gotta understand is, she brought us a book today, Daily Devotions to of collection. Survival, that we're gonna, we're gonna take it back to Dallas with uh-huh. us. Put we're gonna add it to our collection. Oh, good. We're so excited about it. And not only it says uh, day journey to a closer relationship with God. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something, man. Every day you got to try to get closer to God. So mm-hmm. I, I definitely know that this book here, hey, it got to be right. Because when you start putting God in it, mm-hmm. oh, it's about something about to happen. Mm-hmm. See, we, we, you know, you, I don't know if y'all know what Pete, you, you know, my boy, PGF, shout him, who, who actually you know, blessed us to be here in, the, in, 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 in their place today. Putting God first, is the, that's, that's what it stands for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When, right. Anytime you add God to something, you about to start some things. <laughs> you can't start nothing without putting God in it. That's right. Wow, so what, in, what inspired you to say, hey, I'm gonna write a book? Um, really just life in general. It's, it's a, a story about, um, Growing up and being a mom at 16, becoming a mom again at 18, and being a mom again of triplets at the age of 23. So at 23 years old, yes, at 23 years old, I was a Mm. mom of five. 23 years old. Hold on, let's go back. Let's go back. We always like to start (laughs) back. Let's go back to when you were a young child growing up Mm -hmm. and you said New Orleans. I, yeah, I was raised in New Orleans. I was okay. born in New Orleans, raised in New Orleans, but I did come out to Atlanta. But how old were you when you moved? Um, I was in grade school, so I would say like maybe middle school time. Okay, so mm-hmm. do you remember being in New Orleans? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So were you living with your mom and dad? Um, mom. Mom. Mom only because, you know, dad, that? dad um, had a wife. Mom was okay. you know the side we would, girl yes yeah, we would say these days the side chick mm-hmm. um, I can't, yeah i like that <laughs> we, we being real today on boss talk 101 yeah we're gonna keep all the way 100 so did she only have one child with him yes okay with how him. many siblings do you have um by my mom two two yeah and your dad um, yep. By my dad, um, two that I know of, but it's maybe like three or four that suspect, you know, okay. that could possibly be his as well. Did you, were you ever, since he was, she was a side chick, were you ever able to build a relationship with your father? Um, not like I wanted to. That was the biggest problem because I was hidden um, until the age of 30 by his wife. From his wife. From actually. his wife. Yeah, from his wife. So she didn't find out in you know until, until I was a, until ooh, I was thirty years old. So that's a that's a well kept secret. It is. It was a well kept secret. But the crazy thing about it is, um, you know, his family knew, everybody knew but the wife. But the wife. Yes. <laughs> wow. Everybody I'm knew sure she had she suspected something. She had to. It's just no way. You know, now that I'm a woman myself, it's All just right. no way in the world that you can get away with that and me not know. You, you see the signs, because I've heard of a lot of things that happen in society and sometimes you see the signs, but you know how you brush it off because you just don't want to believe it. Yeah. So it could be you, denial. you convince yourself that mm. it, it's not so. Right. You know, so, but I know a lot of old school women who be like, as long as he's coming home to me, I don't care what he do. He pays yeah. the bills. He does this. He does that. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. They had that mentality back in the day. I don't think the women now are going for that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of women, you know, as long as they were taken care of, like you said, right. and, you know, they probably didn't have an education. They didn't really have like a nowhere else to go. So they dealt with it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like, like uh, you got me on the panel. So, you know, I'm just uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to really just let you sit up here and act like, you know, that the man was so just manipulative. No, no, no. I'm not, we're and not let, saying let, that. Let, let, me say, let me say this, man. <laughs> we all 
we all have seen this come short, very short of the glory of God. Right. And you got to understand something. There's flaws in a man just like there's flaws in a woman. Mm -hmm. And and if a man and a woman lay down together and he didn't rape her, then it was consensual. I agree. So therefore, Mm -hmm. they are making these decisions together. Uh, And don't say unbeknownst to me, because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we don't know. Maybe your mama knew about it and she was cool with it when it first jumped off. I don't, I don't, you know, deny that. I have you see my what I'm saying? You can't just say, <laughs> hey, it, it, you got to be, let's be real. This boss talk 101. Yeah. Um, you, you know, uh, I had a home girl back in the day mm-hmm. and she used to go with my other partner and she knew he was married and she would jump in the car with him soon as the man would leave home and go to work. He'd mm-hmm. take her with him and they'd go places and get a little hotel room and spend mm-hmm. about, they wouldn't buy the whole day. You could get two hours for $20 or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you get your two hours and you can go on and just, you know, mm-hmm. basically uh, have a great time for two hours. Mm-hmm. And she knew it, but then end up, you know, being, uh, you know, he left her and she went and told the wife. You see what I'm saying? Or a, a be a, a bastard child. Let's talk about a bastard child for mm-hmm. a minute. Mm-hmm. A bastard child is a child that so-called the, the daddy's not in his life or mm-hmm. they don't know the daddy, but or, or he, it, it was a one night stand. Mm-hmm. You know, these things are not happening just by a man taking advantage of a woman. But these are things that people are doing together. We know that basically God is not in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. It's called fornication. And at the end of the day, and it's adultery mixed in with fornication. Mm-hmm. And it's not just a one party thing. When you go into the book of John, it says that she in chapter eight was caught in the very act. It didn't bring a man, but they brought a woman and the woman, they come bringing her by the arm and they say, Jesus, what should we do to this woman? We caught her in the very act mm. of adultery. And she was getting down with the get down. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> she was having relations with a man that was either married or herself was married. Mm-hmm. And they brought her over and Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. See, I said, always wondered that. I always wondered now. why they never took the yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, well, they're trying to make a point. Because he committed adultery as well. Yeah, but they're trying to make a point. We're trying to let you know that these women be being trifling sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to lie. This woman had you only. It's a few occasions in there you see that when you go over into the book, chapter four, just a few chapters back, it says a woman that Jesus met at a well say she had five husbands, and the one she with now is, is not even a husband. Mm-hmm. So this was a whore. This woman was a harlot. She was running around having mm-hmm. sex with different men. So don't get on this panel. Oh, <laughs> man. And oh, act man. as if women is just holy thou. We never because, said that. No, no, no. I ain't no, breaking. I'm I just break, I'm just talking about the word of God. Now y'all don't have to get mad at me. <laughs> okay, he had the reminders. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can I keep going? Keep, no, no, no. Oh, we okay. Good. Yeah, no. I'm gonna go into Jezebel <laughs> next. I was headed into Jezebel next over in King Al. Do not play with me on this panel oh, because no. it's gonna be real today. Oh, at yeah. the end of the day, we know already that our people are spiraling out of control, especially the black community when it comes down to holding down a family. So we know that there's issues, embedded issues Mm -hmm. that come from a place that uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, we call it dysfunctionalities. We call it uh, mental illnesses Illnesses. where where, where the family is disconnected. And I believe it derived back into, uh, even goes into slavery and the way that we were stripped apart from our mates when our ancestors were stripped apart and a a man was pretty much brought by a white man or, 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 or a child or a family and he would rip that family apart, rape that woman and basically would I, I read a book where a woman was eight months pregnant and, and, and they killed the woman and the baby, they cut the baby out the woman's uh, uh, stomach and the baby was eight, you know, she was eight months pregnant. The baby's cried one time and, and the master stumped his head. I think I heard that story. Before. Okay, so yeah. we know that this here is what we're coming from is what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. So we cannot get caught up in what we're dealing with now and, and, and look at the hindsight as if it did not matter because mm-hmm. it does matter. It mattered for everybody else that went through traumatic situations Mm -hmm. in their past history. No reparations was given for the black people. So we cannot sit here and act as if there is uh, not something going on. The big yellow elephant in the room has to be exposed in the fact that our people have been through a lot. Oh yeah, we have. I didn't mean to drop it on y'all today. I was going to try to be nice, but y'all got me in rare form today. (laughs) Y'all, yeah, I'm ready. 
Yeah, you yeah. already know it though. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to what we were talking about. I took about. him to Bible study for um, a minute, y'all. No, hey, hey, don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but with your father being um, where he was, w did you get to see him at all? Did you ever get to? I did get to spend did some he, time with him. Not like. Did he support you financially? Um, for a period of time, he did. You know, even though he was married and he was he was in a relationship with my mom, they had a really close relationship. I so mean, she he was, was at my mom's it. house more so than he was at his own wife's house. Okay. And um, you know, my mom already had a daughter, my oldest sister, and my um, father had a son by his wife, and they would actually come to the house. You know, he would bring his son over and they would play together. So we, you know, it was like a we say had that a family. You got to back that thing up like juvenile. What did you just say? So. My mom had a daughter already. Okay. Two, actually. Mm -hmm. And my father had two sons by his wife. Mm -hmm. He would bring the sons, his sons, over to my mom's hang out house with to hang out with us. And the sons didn't go back and tell mom at all about No, what it was, was going loyalty on. to the father. the father. So, yeah. So, he wow. did not go back and tell That's mom. That's pretty crazy because... It looked like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had I have understood this because this is stuff that happens. I'm telling you this it happens. It, yeah. it, it, it's, it's happened. It happens frequently, to be honest, mm -hmm. which is not something that it's became a thing of the norm in this day. I'm being real. People, people having multiple scared. families and keeping them separate. Well, you remember asshole in gold that mm -hmm. we interviewed his dad. Mm -hmm. It was the preacher and the preacher. Yeah, he was he, he didn't even know that was his dad. He couldn't even say dad or nothing. Met him at Kroger's when he was 15 years old. And then said he said, "Hey, hi, son." And when he said, "Hi, son," he he said, and, "But he didn't know that really he didn't know that son. really his son. Oh. His son, but his son knew it because he had seen him pushing envelopes under the, you know, giving his mama money." Oh, but he okay. wasn't a part of his life. He wasn't part of his life. Wow. So when he approached him, he was like, "Don't call me daddy. Don't this that Correct. whatever." Correct. Wow. Yeah. You know? And so forth, but he wasn't the only outside child. Eventually, they he found would, out he was jumping around in the congregation. Yeah, he did, he'd been oh, he'd been kicking it with all the, all the people. Well, we say that, but it's happening a lot. It does. I've heard it. It's uh, happening a lot. Yeah, I've heard that minister that, that came on, he said that um, uh, Cornette, shout out to Charles Colbert, Pastor Charles Colbert. Uh, he mm -hmm. said that uh, there, there, that these things happen all the time, and the first lady want to be the first lady so bad that she ignores it just because she wants to be the first lady. So she'll let him do whatever he wants to do, as long as she can sit up there by that pulpit and be called the first lady. Well, that's not me because I am a first lady. Well, I'm just no, telling you. No, no, no. no, 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 no <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, if I throw a rock <laughs> in the crowd and it didn't hit you, you don't not need to say "ouch." You know what I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you good, but no, I, I just so the book. Let's talk about this. Okay. Um, the book. Well, how was the process in in even uh, writing this book? What is, go down that rabbit hole and just some of the people that's listening may want to understand how do you get to this point? Some people don't know how. Well, it's just a lot, you know, being like I said, I was a teen mom at 16, again at 18, again at 23. And then um, and were not they all only different that, men or the same? No, I was married at 18. So you um, were married at 18. I did get married after my two daughters. After I birthed the two girls, I got married to their father. Mm -hmm. And that was the triplet sons as well. So that my all my kids do have the same father. Um, but when we married at 18, um, I got the marriage became abusive. I mean, it was a little abusive, you know, as teenagers, little things happen, but you don't really pay attention to it. But once I became a, a wife at that time, then the abuse just became so rampant. And so I got to that point because I was in an abusive marriage and I had wow. to escape. How long um, were you married for? About nine years. Nine years. Nine years. years. But mm -hmm. when did the abuse start? Because, you know, it don't normally start right away. Well, it started a little bit when I met him in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got pregnant at 16. So it started a little bit in high school, but it wasn't to the point where it was after the marriage. So you get a push here and, you know, a little possessiveness there. But, you know, all 100 percent of, you know, like the real hardcore. I'm not saying that that's not abuse, a push right. here and possessiveness. That's that's a red flag. Um, but once we got married, it just, you know, it was on a whole nother level. I was, you know, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Lopez and Enough. I know. I love wow. that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Definitely. I got I to gotta ask you this because, mm -hmm. 
if 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 I could talk to him, I could probably hear another story. And he then, probably you know, would. Now, now here's yeah. what I want to ask you. See, because I mm -hmm. always like to be the devil's advocate. I okay. got to ask you, mm -hmm. what did you feel that you could have done better in the relationship? Um. Well, uh, I mean, at 16, 17, 18 years old, oh. I think that... You know, I didn't know how to control my emotions. And, you know, people, girls that age really don't. A lot of yeah. people don't know how to control their emotions at that point. Yeah. You know, you're forced into situations mm -hmm. that you're not even ready for. So that was the biggest part of it. And then, you you know, you're arguing about finances because nobody have no money because nobody graduated from high school. And, you know, you have to go work these mediocre jobs and you're struggling. And it's just life, the pressure of life with these children you know, come upon you. And of course that will cause tension inside of a relationship. So it was a number of things. And also at 18 years old, nobody is ready to really be in a committed relationship. So he, he wasn't ready to be yeah. a husband and, you know, he was acting his age, which was, you know, appropriate. And he was not ready to be yeah, anyone's yeah, husband at yeah. that time. I so believe, it was just a lot of different Well, things. I believe both of you guys would have been, you know, I'm the worst <laughs> one to be doing an interview with you because I believe both of y'all Mm -hmm. uh, both being young, you being having to deal with mm -hmm. a dysfunctional uh, situation coming up in your life because right. we only know what we learn coming up. Exactly. So when you went in that relationship, you had been used to your mama being there mm -hmm. with a man that wasn't fully there for her. Right. So you had to understand, understand me this when, until you can forgive yourself mm -hmm. and forgive all the situations around you, around you can't you. redevelop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So redevelopment comes when you're able to let go of things because you can't make room for other things until you let go of the things that are holding you down. Right. And a lot of I, I think of the reason why I ended up in a situation like that stems from, you know, the mm -hmm. trauma that took place in my life. That's you know, right. Before I was dealing with a lot of re rejection mm -hmm. um, and it was just so much, you know, that mm -hmm. I didn't receive as a child from my father. Yeah. And I was looking for those things inside of this person and um Sometimes, and, you know, um, you will be on the, the brink of death, which I was on just trying to fill a void, okay. you know, inside of your life. And that's that's how that book kind of. Let me ask you, know if I wanted to ask um, about how, um, how, how rough it got with you. It got really I mean, rough. Did, did, what, how rough? I want to go into detail, if you don't mind. OK, I, I'm, I definitely can go into detail. I mean, In the instance of the most um, yeah, horrific. Um situation the in. most horrific was i mean i was kidnapped before you was kidnapped by, your, by knife point yeah by him yes by him this was after that's after you left that's after i left that's one of the you know instances but i mean i remember being choked out completely passing out being choked out i mean having to cover up black eyes going to work so i you know i, I will always have black eyes i've been pushed downstairs you know I was locked in closets for a period of times. Um, you know, it was just so many different things. I was, I was beat with things and, uh, you know, it, he wanted to do it in front of the children because he didn't want the children to respect me either. And so um, it was just a lot of stuff that was not, a, you know, that was going on that no woman should have to go through. Is this something that he yeah. saw his father do to his mother? Because sometimes... It, it, it trickles down. I mean, now that I know more, yeah, definitely. His father was abusive. He had a, um, you know, alcoholism issue with the mother. The mother was a mom at 14 and, you know, they were in an abusive situation because they were, you know, young having children too. So I think he's just seen a lot mm -hmm. um, growing up. And so I think he didn't know how to handle women outside. How he handled women was abusing women. Have you gotten your kids counseling because they did see some of this? Um, the two oldest girls... They never receive like, you know, like therapy for it. But we have had conversations. Because you know, I you don't want them to end up in the same situation, right? And now the oldest one is twenty four, the other one is twenty two, and uh, you know, I've seen some things that I, I know where it stems from. You know, the type right. of relationships a man that they're picking. You know, and they don't have a good relationship with their father right now. They really don't have one. So I so know the generational for curse is continuing to ripple through your life. Yes, but we are praying against that, you know, and so I'm proud of them that they, you know, graduated college and, you know, they don't have any children and, you know, just me by pouring into them at this point, I'm trying to have them unlearn things that they learned, you know, growing up and trying to show them the right way to go. You know, what, what, what I really look at is, boy, I tell you, we, 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 we put our little shirts on and mm -hmm. we, we, we act our little part as civilized uh, Americans. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, but but, you know, we're 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 covering up. We're, yeah. we're, we're covering up 
the state of who we are mm -hmm. by saying, okay, we're able to deal with society the same way that our white constituencies do. I'm going to mm -hmm. say this, but you, your white constituencies didn't, they didn't, you went through way different circumstances in them. Definitely. And then when you watch the, you watch different shows, mm -hmm. you think that you, you, in your heart feel like, okay, uh, um, you know, I supposed to do my marriage like this. Mm -hmm. I supposed to do my uh, everything that I've seen done. I, I'm going to have that type of lifestyle. But you still have embedded issues in your background, in your parents' background mm -hmm. as black African Americans. Mm -hmm. You still have stuff in uh, Jamaicans and well, whoever. When you start coming off slave ships, it's a whole different level when you're trying to figure out how to fight a whole different devil. Yeah. So you sitting up trying to figure out how to fight a devil the same way that your white constituencies do. So when they go to work and put their shirt on and they show up at their job location mm -hmm. and they show up in their homes in the evening, you feel like, okay, we can run ours the same way. But there's a lot of deep bedded issues that never got taken care of in your past. Mm -hmm. And you set up and you talk these talks and you try to understand the same way they do, but it's not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. But but we try to fight it the same way. We all do it. So at the end of the day, we got to try to find a way to be real with ourselves for who we are, what we've been through, mm -hmm. so that we can start challenging those facts and be better uh, family oriented people as mm -hmm. black African Americans. Uh, uh, Jamaican Americans or whoever when you've been through a lot your people been through a lot dog yeah. quit acting like they ain't been through a lot yeah a lot of Am trauma. I right? it's a lot of trauma in our his in our history yeah mm -hmm. and then on top of that you're watching like the news and and it's depicting your people as if they gorillas to be honest with you <laughs> you're watching the news and you think all of your people is crazy because they're going to depict that and it's biased mm. it's very biased so we have to be careful how we attack our own people, man. Yeah. But the thing that I wanted to say is that a lot of times people always act like it can't be changed, like it can't be broken. The cycle can be broken. Definitely. The change can be broken. Yeah. Because I have seen many people who have been through parents, grandparents have been through very hor horrific things. Mm -hmm. And they are now with a great parent. They pour it, as you said, pour it into their children. You know, mm -hmm. everything about God, how to run your life in a... In, in a manner that you don't pass on negativity to your generations because you're supposed to live your life not only for your kids but for your kids kids That's because right. it passes down into your blood right well i know that it can it, god can change things because i've been married to you for almost 20 years and i seen my daddy and mama fight every weekend i seen my daddy shoot at my mama in the in the same house me and you fixing up right now mm -hmm. it, yeah oh, wow. i've seen my yeah every week every yeah we went from house to house yeah I've seen uncles beat women all the time. Have I beaten you ever in no. life? Have I touched you <laughs> in 20 years? Okay, so we know that yeah. God can change things. Yeah, definitely. But we just got to be able to understand that it has to be God in the center of it in order for it to change. Exactly. exactly. And it God. starts with a decision, too. You well, have to it's, accept it starts God with God. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It starts with a decision. Mm -hmm. But I'm just Mental saying, God, mm -hmm. say, with Everything God. Everything starts in your mind. Mm -hmm. What does it say on the wall at the house? With God, all things are what? Possible. All things are possible and, and you know, yeah. that's why I'm here because because of God. So through all the stuff that I went through, those are personal stories. When I was um, when I finally was able to leave um, that abusive marriage and I was a single mother for several for several years. And how old were you when you left? Um, so I was probably around 26, 25, 26. With when, the five kids. Yeah, with mm -hmm. the five with the five kids. That's when the divorce was final. Right. So I was separated and trying to escape, but I say it was final, final around twenty five, twenty six okay. years old. Um, and so I was raising five kids by myself, but so many women would stay in that situation because they wouldn't know how to maneuver, or they would be too afraid, or they didn't, right. they wasn't educated, or they didn't have the money. Um, so they would just tolerate, mm -hmm. you know, um, abuse and. I just refused to do that. I just wanted something different for my kids. So uh, whatever it took. I mean, I had triplets. They were one pound at birth. Mm -hmm. um, they were born at 25 weeks. And the doctor That's said small. that they will they won't uh, make it. But because of the grace of God, they're still here and they're 17 years old right now. They don't have any you know, major issues or anything like that. So I took my three sons and my two daughters and we were we were, you know, chucking it. Basically, we was apartment to apartment. You know, I had a lot of repossessions. I went through a lot of different things. But one thing I didn't do was give up. 
And so the book came when I was at a, a food and pantry. And you didn't give up because of your faith that you were holding on to? Or? I didn't give up because of my faith because God told me, he showed me something when I was in my early 20s. He, I knew I was going to have a different life, but I didn't know how it was going to come about. Like he told me in my early 20s that I was going to be a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, how is that possible? Because look at my life. You know, I'm in abusive marriage. I mean, my life didn't look nothing like what God was showing me. So I just held on to what he told me, you know, all those years. And when I was in a food pantry, I used to pick up a devotionals and that would help me kind of get through, you know, because I was just going through so much. Um, we didn't have any food. And so I would have to go get help from different places. And um, God told me to write that book inside of that food pantry. I, I got the idea for the book. He said, write about your own stories. Um, and devotionals because devotionals was help will help me, you know, get so through. You wanted my, to help others. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to help other women by using my personal stories. And so it's a 30 day devotional, basically. I like you know, it. you read it one one devotional a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's to help you get through. And, and how old were you when you wrote that? Um, I started writing in 2016. So it okay. wasn't, you know, it wasn't you that, self published. That yeah, it's it's independent. Everything is self published or whatever. So I complete everything by 2020. Of course, life back and forth. Um, you know, I wasn't able to complete until 2020, but I got married again in uh, 2019. Awesome. And then I was able to uh, publish it right after that. That's why I believe that God put us through situations, no matter how ter horrific your situation is. Uh -huh. It's a lesson to be learned, not really by you, but for mm -hmm. others. Yeah. Because if you don't go through anything, how are you going to be able to help somebody to because some people like how can you advise me? You never been through what I've right. been through. And that's a lot of people's mentality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you can't imagine how can you help me? Mm -hmm. So God put us through these things to grow, mm -hmm. to learn and to know how to help others. Yeah. But I really, I really believe that. I believe that's why I went through so much. Cause I used to be crying all the time and I'm like, God, why am I going through this? Cause people life wasn't like that. Like people had like normal lives. My life was very abnormal. People that you did not know. Right. Right. And I was just like, why am I going through this? But, you know, he said, you're going through this for others. You're not exactly. going through this because of yourself, because exactly. I'm going to be using you to be a force. You wow. know, you know, I, I think that's great. And I, I definitely commend you mm -hmm. for uh, being a, a pillar Merci. because you're able to now help others who go yeah. through abusive relationships. Oh, yeah. Um, you're at, you're able to tap into places where certain people can't tap into. Right. That's why God, he doesn't let you go through things for no reason. OK, mm -hmm. um, that's 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 how he works, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I just thank God for you being able to get it together enough to where now you can snatch others out of the fire. Yeah, definitely. It's just so many women that go through so much, but I, I really focus on self-worth because I think a lot of women go through unnecessary things because they don't know their worth and their value. And the only way that you're really going to know is if you know who your father is and your identity is through him. So you can't let the world tell you who you are. You got to you know, allow God to show you who you are and tell you. And that's how, when you know you will be on the right path because, you know, women just, we already know. We on social media, we see all the buffoonery and all the foolishness that go on. You know, I just seen something with little baby and, mm -hmm. um, you and know, the Danny mama. chick mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, I don't listen to his music, but I've seen it because it's everywhere. And I right. said, it's so unfortunate. If she knew her worth, she, you know, she wouldn't allow these different situations. But we have to live and learn but it's it's important for women older women to go and help the younger woman yeah, um to pull them out of the I fire think it, it spirals out of control because of a lot of times um we get so caught up in our everyday life that we we become people that just look out for ourselves yeah you know um people don't want to yeah that's their business you know what i mean yeah yeah but, yeah. but as people and i'm going to say people in men or women a lot of times we need to learn how to yes give advice or yes try to help somebody but say what you need to say and leave alone leave them alone yeah. because sometimes we tend to because we care no you need to do this you need to do try that to push it, yeah. try to push it because you know what you're telling them is correct yeah but if you realize that that person keep going through the same thing over and over no matter what you keep telling them because mm -hmm. God needs for them to learn a lesson sometimes on their own. Sometimes they got to hit Go rock bottom yeah. and you're looking at somebody's life and be like, but they're at rock bottom. But mm -hmm. no, it, they have to go even lower than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? To yeah. really realize. And like for me, my prayer to anybody is always that don't take their life because once you're here, no matter what you're going through, you have the chance mm -hmm. to change, to, to learn that lesson mm -hmm. and make a difference. Yeah, definitely. That. 
That's big. That's what we should do, you know, as women. So that's part of the reason why I started Wife I Tribe. Love it. I love it. Wife, so wife you, what? Wife Tribe. And what's the, Explain to us what Wife Tribe is. Wife Tribe is a community that I founded. Um, it's for single, engaged, and married women. You know, when I graduated with the certification in coaching, I was really trying to find my niche. And, you know, my coaching is like a plethora of different type of coaching that I do. But I said, let me boil it down to one specific thing. So I wanted to focus on marriage, you know, because it's just like a lot of people are struggling in their marriage and a lot of people are struggling trying to get to marriage. So I said, let me focus on that area because that's a big area, especially out here in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of women are looking for husbands. Why do you think it's so hard? Um, if we're in Atlanta, it's a lot of reasons. Because I was single in Atlanta for about what, 14, 13, 14 years. Well, why do you think? Why do you think that is? <sighs> Let's be honest. Hmm. I mean, part of the reason is that the women are too desperate. The desperate. They're too, the women are too desperate and they're willing to tolerate. They're willing to do too much too soon. And the men know that and they take full advantage. But is this, is this a that. tug of war? Is this a game that's being played between a woman and a man? And, and see, because it's crazy to me how, how we look at things, but there's a lot of different times when you look, there's a lot of different issues, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different times when there is there a men shortage um it is a man that that's a part of it too you know they say a lot about the gay community out here you know you have a lot of men out here that are gay and that are down low so that's a part of it you know as well wait a minute what down low yeah down low so that means that they are you know in you know the outwardly they are supposed to be you know, liking women, I guess, but then, you know, behind closed doors, they like, they do something else. You know, they like men. And I've been in situations where I was with a friend, okay, a guy friend. And um, he, when we were together, he, a, a guy and a young lady walked through the door and he said, I just slept with him last night. Wow. Yeah. And he was with his girl. Wow. You know, we were in the driver's license place. I'll never forget that. Wow. So it's a lot of that that goes on, you know, that's happening <laughs> out here in Atlanta. So, you yeah. know, the pickings are are really small out, you know, out here. That's wow. a big part of it. Wow. It's, it's just sad because it's it's just being being manipulated by the devil is something else, you know? Yeah. Um, the whole situation, it's a spirit that sweeps through the nation mm -hmm. and causes people to look at things from a crazy perspective because of what mm -hmm. they see and what they uh, what they're being introduced to. Yeah. And also, you know, the woman, too, like you have a lot of smart women out here. You have a lot of bosses out here. You have a lot of women with money out here, real educated. And they just, you know, are doing a doggone thing and they're not willing to um, just take anybody either. And so they might have some men out here. But if you're not fitting a certain description that will fit, you know, their lifestyle, then they won't even give well, you a let's, chance. Let's to. talk about that for a minute, because there is that the, this sin thing is serious because. You just said something. They got money. Right. And they pretty much became leaders in their own way. Right. So it could be so manipulative to the fact that they could be using men for sex. Right. Hanging out with different men that, that they can manipulate and just mm -hmm. using them just for that. And then going back to their well-established whatever uh, uh, careers and homes. And, mm -hmm. and, and they're cool with that. You see what I'm saying? This is what can happen. If you got the women pretty much, uh, like you say, they're up. They, they up. dominate right now. <laughs> there you go. So they, they don't need no man, huh? They become right. like a man so much so that they a man. That, that's part of the issue, too. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, because um, I was the biggest yeah. tomboy growing up, mm -hmm. so everything I did, I was competing against a man, against a boy. Mm -hmm. Is that why so, you compete against me so much now? Uh, yeah, let's not yeah, get into that. Yeah, right? We can take it there if you want to. <laughs> no, but... Um, to the point where every time, like even seeing um, women truck drivers, I was so happy because I was like, more power. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, but I remember in college and because um, I went to a Christian school, so we always had to do Bible classes. And I remember one day I was reading about women being submissive. And, and, and when I started looking at the generation that we were in, where you had more men staying at home playing video games and more women were going out and working and you know being independent and being like yeah i wear the pants i do this i do that you know 
he's just this, 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 and this. And I'm like, you are making it bad on yourself that you turn around and blame the man that he's not um, playing the role, but you're you're not allowing him to. Right. You know what I mean? You're belittling mm -hmm. him. Like, no matter how much you can do, you need to know your place. I agree. And you need to, when I say that, some women might get offensive. Right. But when I say that, you know, just say, just like I said, behind every successful man, there is a woman. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to do certain things. Right. Um, you can still get your education, still have your terrific job and so forth. But when you come home. They don't have anything to do with your household. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? Your role inside your house. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that, and I, that's how I learned that. Yeah, know? but I think there's a big issue with that. I think, I think women who a lot of times go through those situations have a big issue trying to decipher between the two. Mm -hmm. I think that, they, that you get caught up just like a police officer who goes out and look at uh, all these different homicides daily and, and he, he pretty much in shootouts and then he pretty much uh, goes over here and uh, he have to go cause a little girl was kidnapped and he found her inside of a building. And then when one day he ends up stopping somebody and shooting them in, the, in on accident. And it's a perfectly innocent situation, mm -hmm. but it's because of everything that was All staged before that, mm -hmm. uh, it causes it just to ride right on into that situation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so I think that that plays a big part. I think we, 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 we don't understand that, that, Man, hey, man, when you start influencing something and dealing with something in a certain way uh, and you put on this machoism as the man, then it, it, it goes home with you. Just like a man takes it home with him when he works all the yeah. time and all those situations he deal with, he ends up bringing that to the house with him because he, he's overwhelmed. And I, and, I, and I think that's that plays a major part for me. I understand that that that. Uh, you know, we say multitasking and all that, but come on, man. You know, it's tough. Society tell you know the black man. Uh, go look at the unemployment rates on, on on the brothers. Go go look. I mean, you know, I, I know I've worked in corporate America now for, on the same job for over twenty some years, and um, I can tell you for a fact uh, we hire sisters a lot more in higher positions than we do brothers. But that's taken away from her household, that's taken her away from her children. And that is no, I know, the, I agree with the you. breakdown of, you know, the black family because we are so out of whack and so out of place. And that's why, you know, more other cultures, I don't want to just say white people, but other mm -hmm. cultures really understand you know, what families, the dynamic is supposed to be like. They don't have a problem with being home. They don't have a problem with not being a boss. I'm not saying there's something wrong with being a boss or anything like that, but these women focus more so like on their children and, you know, the next generation. More How to so. help the family and not well, just to help them. Of course, the, yeah. white, the white people can do that uh, just per se because they built this country on your back. Yeah, your husband, the, the, your so-called would have been husbands would have been in way better situations if they mm -hmm. grandpa, grandpa, grandpa hadn't uh, had a had slave. Well, yeah, they, they, you know they what I'm saying? Have we, a jump start. So, so this here yeah. is this, but we hate to talk about that. Yeah, we always try to deny that, and and and, and that's sad because at the end of the day, you you look, I know you can't go back and change it, but you got to start realizing Understand where you that. come from. Why do you think you read the genealogies in the Bible? Why do we read it's forty two generations to get to Jesus if you're a believer? Mm -hmm. Why? If it's not important. So w why when we start looking back down that rabbit hole, they tell us to get over it. I disagree. I don't think we should get over it. I think we should learn from it. And I think mm -hmm. we should definitely do things different um, moving forward. All I'm saying is, man, we got a long ways to go. And I, and I know that. And that's why I come. I've been a black business owner for so many years. And I've always loved my people, no matter what, even though if they... They acted a fool. I still love them through mm -hmm. it because I know already I understand that there's trauma and they've been through a lot. They may not understand it, but God's given me an all C&I to mm -hmm. say, hey, that person and that guy, that girl, they've been through it. So I got to be here for them. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with that. So I'm doing my part by, you know, uh, founding the wife job and it's supposed to help women. I like that. You know, um, a system in becoming virtuous women and like what they really look like, because so many people don't really know what a wife supposed to be. They don't really have an idea. They're, they're looking out at the world. They're looking at movies and TV and they're trying to figure out. You know who they are, and because they didn't have that at home with their mother, right? They didn't have that them growing up. What a, a wife should be, because whether yeah. the mother wasn't a wife, number one, mm -hmm. or um, 
just wasn't at home. Yeah, definitely. And so I just wanted to help the woman. You know, my goal is just to help the woman, assist them in becoming virtuous wives so they can attract the, the single woman can attract the type of men that they desire. And that if you're already married and you still don't know how to be, because just because you're married, that don't mean that you you, you are, you know how to be a wife. Right. And so, you know. It's an ever learning situation. Yeah. <laughs> we all don't know. Right, I'm telling right. You this. <laughs> okay, y'all, marriage is not easy. Not at all. But no. it is so possible <laughs> to have a very happy, successful marriage with both of you learning each other and learning how to be happy with each other and learning to mm -hmm. compromise and always keeping, for us, always keeping God in the middle of our relationship yeah. because... And not being, if you're angry today, don't go home and, and, and carry that over into the next day and the next day and the next day. You gotta day. let it go. But yeah. you have to look at certain things, you know, like he could come to you and start an argument and you don't realize that it's the person who he dealt with two minutes ago that made him angry and then all of a sudden he's lashing out at you and it's yeah. nothing you did. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. you have an argument. And mm -hmm. like I tell people all the time, and I've said this on every single show, it's how you perceive something. A lot of arguments start from a wrong perception. You say something and you didn't mean it to me mm -hmm. in a certain way. And I took it offensively, mm -hmm. but I didn't have to take it offensively. I could have changed my thinking right. and took it in a different way for it not to mess up my mood. Right. You right. know what I mean? And because I can't change you. I can only change myself. Right. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like, you know that you can't change the other person. That's the, that's the one thing you can't change the other person. But yeah, you know, White Tribe is just a community because married people need community for survival too. Where can, oh. where can we get this book? Um, well, it's everywhere actually right now. It's on Amazon. Um, it's on all uh, bornsandnobles.com. You can find it anywhere online. Um, but it's also on my website, uh, theofficialwifetribe.com. Okay, and how can people get a hold of you? Um, I am on all social media platforms. So I'm on, um, on Facebook, the official wife tribe, Instagram, the official wife tribe. Also, TikTok. Um, uh, yeah. Well, wife coach era on TikTok. Okay. Um, so I do, I'm a wife coach. That's my niche that I'm doing, um, right now. Um, but wife coach era on Instagram and TikTok. Hey. Tell me about your most successful story. A most successful story? As in helping um, a woman um, through her situation to become a successful wife. To become a successful wife. Oh, well, I mean, like, it was it was a young girl that I knew who was on the verge. Like, she packed her bags up. She was, like, ready to go, you know, and her bags was at the door. And, um, you know, just gave her the book, basically. And, you know, well, not that particular book, but it was a book called The Prayers of the Husband. What is it called? Stormy Oriton. You ever heard of that book mm -hmm. before? Um, it's a prayer book for your husband, like different prayers that you can pray for your husband or whatever. Um, and just go through that book. <laughs> you know, <daily. laughs> looking at me like uh, you need to get yeah, it. Yeah, kind of join up with other women in the book club and we kind of talk it over and give women help and tips on how to, you know, deal with certain certain situations like, you know, and preventing her from like leaving her husband. So they're actually in good shape right now. They're not going to divorce court. So she decided to stay and, you know, believe God that her, her marriage can work. Awesome. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I tell you, man, you you bless our platform and we appreciate you for coming on it. Man. I appreciate the invite. Uh, hey, man, it's Erin Nicole Williams and uh, she has a book, man, called Daily Devotion of Survival. And mm -hmm. um, hey, man, she's dope, guys. You guys need to pick this book up. One of the dopest books out. And one of the core statements I seen when I was scrolling through it was, uh, uh, the, the, the scripture, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great because that's one of my defining scriptures for a defining moment. So yeah. thank you so much for coming on thank Boss you. Talk 101. I appreciate man. it. And it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.